now HEV is something where tractor efforts from or tractor forces from engine and an electric driver combined. Depending on how they are combined, we have three different architectures. Um, they can be crudely classified as series, parallel, and power split. We'll go into them in slides following. Series architecture is basically an electric vehicle with an onboard engine which discharges the battery, right? All the traction is provided by the electric drive. So you can see the diagram here. Uh, can you see the cursor? Oh yeah, I, I, I think you can. So the transmission system here is what provides the tractor efforts. And it is all this thing, all, everything that you see on the right is an electric drive. And there's an engine here that just charges the battery in the, on the electric drive. And what are the uh, advantages of this? Since the engine is not connected directly to the to the wheels, it can operate at whatever speed it want. So again, engine can be operating at the most efficient spot, even if the vehicle is not moving. Like, for example, if you're trying to, if the let's say the battery is at zero, you can just start the engine. The vehicle is not moving. The engine is operating at the most efficient point, and then when the battery charges enough you can start the vehicle. But again, this is one of the disadvantages as well, right? When the battery is drained out, even if the engine is running, you cannot start the vehicle until the battery reaches a certain percentage. So that's one of the limitations here. Um, since electric drive is what provides the traction here, the transmission is very simple. The power, con power train control is again simple. Engine sizing is also the simplest amongst the three architectures because all the engine is doing is providing uh, an average energy needed over a certain drive cycle. But again, that is in some cases a limitation because let's say your vehicle is going up, up slope for two to three hours and engine is not providing that average power, it's providing something lesser than that, then your battery is eventually going to drain out. And then you will have, you'll have to stop your, your vehicle, let the battery charge up again and and then start. So that's again one of the limitations. And yeah, engine can operate in the most efficient zone I've mentioned already. Regenerative braking. Every time you brake, you're charging the battery. So you're not wasting that energy. Moving on to parallel uh, HEV architecture. Again, in parallel, there are different kinds uh, P0, P1, P2, P3, and P4, depending upon how or where the engine and where the electric drive are coupled or where what the position of electric drive and engine are relative to each other there's subsystems we, we won't be going into the, them now but in this one the traction is provided by coupling the ic engine and the electric drive so they are mechanically coupled together and both of them together provide the tractive efforts so let's say for example if you have certain performance requirement the engine has to be running and the electric drive has to be running at the same time and this is one of the limitations because in this case the engine cannot operate at one particular point it can operate in an efficient zone it does not have to operate in a non-efficient zone because when it's in when for example if it's operating at low load we can just disconnect the engine and drive the vehicle with uh, the electric drive. But when the engine is connected, it has to operate uh, depending on what, what the wheel speed is. So it cannot operate it at one particular point or at the most efficient point, but it can in general operate in an area where it's most efficient. So this is one of the downsides of parallel architecture. Um, one advantage is since engine and electric drive come together to provide the tractive efforts they have to be half as good right so let's say the maximum torque that you need, need is uh need is xyz um newton meters and if you're using 50 50 percent efforts you just need an engine that provides half the uh, the torque right again uh, this this regenerative braking is again one of the uh, benefits here which is in any hev since engine and electric drive combine together, this requires a multi-gear transmission uh, and a power complex part in control to 
convert that engine speed into wheel, uh, wheel speed, which is not always seen, like, which not always, but most of the times, not most, all, almost all of the times it's different from what the engine is running at. Moving on to next one, power split architecture. This combines best of the best of both worlds, best of series and parallel. Sometimes it is known as series parallel architecture as well. Uh, this has two EDs, two electric drives, and one engine coupled in such a form that the engine can operate at whatever point it wants at all times and still provide whatever traction um, it, the vehicle needs. And the traction is again provided by engine and electric drive together. So this is basically combining the best of two parts and eliminating uh, all, the, uh, all the negatives. Traction is again provided by, uh, third point is traction is again provided by electric drive and IC. So the engine can be smaller uh, than it's required for the performance. Uh, the transmission for this is simple because there's, the coupling system uses some uh, a planetary gear system, which is again a transmission. But if you consider uh, transmission outside the power split system, it has to be simple because uh, the, um, what's it called? I'm short of words, but um, the transmission apart from planetary gear system is very simple. And that is what we're concerned about if you're looking at power split architecture as one single module. Um, again, par, um, so transmission is simple, but the controls is a little complex because you have to come up with certain E. So there, I mentioned there are two electric drives here. So you have to come up with certain split there in order for the engine to be operating at the most efficient spot. At the most efficient spot. So the control is a little bit complex. I, I'd say it's the most complex amongst three architectures here. And again, regenerative bra braking. Uh, more about regenerative braking. Uh, when a vehicle is operating, regenerative braking depends on the traction or the torque that it provides and the speed. When the speed of the vehicle or the direction that the wheels are moving is same as the traction that is provided, it's in propulsion mode. And when the traction or torque is opposite from the motion, then it's braking. In this case, it's regenerative braking. In that case, um, the battery can be charged here. So yeah, whenever a hybrid electric drive is operating, it's either in propulsion mode or regenerative braking mode. So key things to know under this topic is uh, you need to be able to determine the IC engine and electric drive performance required for a vehicle performance, a certain vehicle performance. You need to be able to size them properly in order to match what you need. Um, you should be able to simulate uh, the performance on, on a real world drive cycle or wide open throttle in certain cases. And for that you need a longitudinal vehicle dynamics model uh, that we talked about earlier. If you're uh, designing a parallel HEV, you also need to simulate the gearing system or the transmission system for that. You need to be, uh, you need to be able to understand what is an optimum transmission system and how you can optimize uh, the performance of the vehicle by using an optimum transmission system. You also need to, if now talking about regenerative braking, not always regenerative braking is sufficient, right? Because after a certain point, you'll need that mechanical braking because regenerative braking has its limits. So you need to determine that split and determine how the control is going to operate uh, to split the braking between mechanical braking system and regenerative braking system. And again, you need to be able to model, simulate the electric drive of it, the electric motor, and the battery management system in certain cases as well. Now, moving on to levels of hybridization, depending upon how much um, or what, what size of battery the HEV uses, there's different levels. On the left side here is I conventional IC engine vehicle, which 
just use this IC engine. And on the right side here is a complete electric vehicle, which is BEV battery electric vehicle, which does not use any engine. And in between this different kinds, micro, mild, uh, full. EREV is extended, extended range electric vehicle, which was, which is a kind of series vehicle, series architecture, hybrid vehicle. There's something called a plug-in vehicle where you can charge the battery of an HEV by plugging it in. It has a bigger battery. Micro HEV here is basic, is a system where the electric part comes in only while starting the engine. So if you guys know uh, Bolero, it's a micro, uh, micro HEV, um, or at least one version of it is a micro HEV. It uses electric drive when you start the engine. And uh, the electric system is storing energy during, uh, in terms of, in, in the form of regenerative braking when braking happens. So it's one simple example of HEV. Micro HEVs are cheaper since the hybrid, the electrification is very low, but again, yeah. One example that you might be familiar. Key things to know uh, coming to levels of hybridization is you need to be able to simulate different levels and you need to understand the cost saving or economy of different levels uh, depending on uh, what size battery they're using. Now moving on to engine controls. Um, even if HEV use uh, the electric drive and engines. Engine is the superhero here. Engine is the uh, the propulsion factor that provides most of its propulsion still. Um, that's why we need to know how the engine is controlled uh, when it comes to an HEV. Older engines or conventional, not conventional, but older engines before there were the control systems evolved, use mechanical systems for uh, the various operation, like various, subsystem operations, for example, cam, sh cam shafts. The cam shafts were um, mechanical, uh, mechanic. it was a mechanical rod which was coupled to the engine and it had certain cam balls which operated the valves mechanically. And one downside of this was everything was speed, speed dependent, right? When the engine is operating faster, that cams, cam moves faster and, and the walls open faster close faster, right? Or open earlier and close earlier. But that's not what an what ideally an engine needs, right? At higher speeds, the wall need, walls need to be open earlier, but they need to close later as well, which is not possible. In, in mechanical systems, everything was related to speed, but for optimum performance, it should not be. So when we control these walls externally, we have that flexibility. So electrification there, provides us more flexibility. And since we have more flexibility, we can uh, get an enhanced performance there. With modern control systems, we can ensure that everything, the valve timing, the spark advance and everything is right to provide the optimum or ideal combustion recipe uh, so that the engine can operate at its max performance or give its peak economy uh, or performance, whatever by um, having these parameters just right. So if, if you want to simulate or if you want to uh, develop a HEV or design a control system for HEV, you need to know how um, a supervisory control determines how much, what part of the traction is going to come from the electric drive and what part of the traction is going to come from the IC engine drive. Then depending on, on what part of it comes from the IC engine, you need to have the right control strategy uh, to control the engine. And the third point is not related to engine controls. It's just simple, um, simple thing, simple uh, method that is used in industry to crudely simulate drive cycle performance. So they use a simple PID control to simulate an actual driver. Um, and then they run various different drive cycles to, to, to see how the vehicle follows the drive cycle. Um, the common one that I am aware of is NRTC, which is non-road transient cycle. Um, it's mostly used on tractors, um, some off-road vehicles. 
so they you they run that drive cycle drive cycle is basically um okay i'll, I'll first explain what drive cycle is it's basically a profile of a vehicle a set profile that vehicle should match uh, well let me try to explain it in a better way so there are these set profiles of speed for example there's a speed profile given speed will go from zero to uh, let's say 60 in first five minutes then it'll be it'll be constant for like two minutes then it'll go down to this thing. that's basically a simple drive cycle right so there are certain drive cycles which are industry standards for performances and emission analysis those same drive cycles are used every time to compare different vehicle vehicles or different engines Thank you.